Hi, my name is Dr. Neil Polajwala from Retinal Consultants of Arizona, and welcome to our new segment, Eye on Vision. Today I'll be answering your questions from social media. We have five questions here today. The first one is from Debbie from Lake Havasu City, and she asks, I have d had damage to my left optic nerve for many years, and about two years ago I found out I have damage to my optic nerve in my right eye. What happens when you damage your optic nerves, and how can you damage your optic nerve? Debbie, that's a great question. Your optic nerve is the cable that connects the eyeball to the brain, and it's really important to have a healthy optic nerve in order to maintain good vision. Optic nerves can be damaged in many ways, and we see this very often in patients. The most common way that the optic nerve can be damaged is by a disease called glaucoma. Glaucoma is a disease of elevated eye pressure that causes uh, dam direct damage to the optic nerve by killing the cells that make up the nerve. And so over time, you can get thinning of your optic nerve, and this can lead to loss of your peripheral vision. It's important to be able to diagnose this early on because optic nerve damage can be irreversible. And so getting early treatment for diseases such as glaucoma is really important and it's important to follow up with your eye doctor about this because we don't want you to lose any vision from irreversible damage to your optic nerve. Our next question is from John from Phoenix. John asks, I saw an interview with Dr. Edward Quinlan and he talked about a medicine delivery device study through the Retina Research Institute. Can you tell me more about this and how can I be considered for clinical trials? John, I'm really glad that you saw this because this is a very important uh, medical device. I think this might be something that might revolutionize the way we treat macular degeneration. As you may know, macular degeneration has a uh, unfortunately high treatment burden on patients. They have to go to the doctor sometimes monthly and receive frequent eye injections in order to help preserve their vision. In this new study, we are looking at a surgically implanted device within the eye that, that releases medicine slowly over time, and, in, and we hope that it will help reduce the amount of injections a patient may need or treatments a patient may need for macular degeneration. And so this study is a really good one, and it's a really great one to be involved with if you're interested, uh, because it can help uh, decrease the amount of treatments you may need for your macular degeneration. Our next question is from Wilma from Phoenix. And Wilma asks, what should patients actually see after surgery for retinal detachment as it goes through the process of healing? Wilma, first in order to kind of understand what the expectation should be immediately after surgery, it's important to kind of know what we do during surgery. So when your retina is detached, it's separated from the back wall of the eye. And in order to reattach the retina, we have to do surgery um, to help drain the fluid from behind the retina and put the retina back to where it belongs. Then we do some laser work to kind of spot weld the weak areas of the retina in place so it doesn't detach again. At the end of the surgery, we usually put a bubble within the eye, which can be a gas bubble or an oil bubble. And the purpose of this bubble is to hold the retina in place while it heals. The gas bubble tends to dissolve slowly over time, and we have a bubble that lasts in the eye for two weeks, and we have a bubble in the, that lasts in the eye for two months. The oil bubble, on the other hand, is reserved for more complex cases because the oil bubble does not dissolve and it stays in the eye until your doctor feels like it's okay to remove it. And usually we keep the oil bubble in the eye for about three to six months. The, while the gas or oil is in the eye, it's very difficult to see out of your eye because you're, it's difficult to see through that. After the gas bubble dis, uh, goes away or the oil is removed, the vision does improve. However, it's important to know that retinal detachment repair is a very complicated surgery and the vision does not improve instantly. It can take, oh, it can take about a month for your vision to stabilize and it can take even more longer um, before we notice your final visual improvement. And so most patients recognize a slow gradual improvement over time which can take up to over a year. 
It's also important to know that depending on how extensive your retinal detachment was, um, it may um, it may uh, cause your vision not to improve the, how, to the extent that we want it to. If your retinal, retina was completely detached, for instance, sometimes we don't get you back to the vision that you used to have, and that's just the unfortunate nature of retinal detachments. The next question is from, da uh, from Dana from Phoenix, and she says, I've heard a lot about macular degeneration and the risks of losing vision. Can macular degeneration lead to total blindness? Dana, macular degeneration is a disease that affects the center part of the retina, which is also known as the macula. The macula is really important because it's responsible for our central vision, our reading vision, our color vision, and kind of our everyday uh, useful vision. So when you have damage to your retina from macular degeneration, it often affects the center part of your vision. And many patients notice a blurring or distortion in the middle of the vision or kind of a blacking out of the center of their vision. The important thing to note is that your peripheral vision or your side vision is not really affected by macular degeneration. So although it becomes very difficult to see when you have advanced macular degeneration, you're never completely blind because you will still maintain your side vision. Our last question is from Philip from Prescott. And Philip says, I had surgery for a retinal detachment in Phoenix, but was not able to travel back home to Prescott because of the gas bubble in my eye. Can you tell me how changes in elevation affect this procedure? And should I be cautious about traveling through different altitudes? Philip, this is a great question. It's really important that patients with gas bubble really listen to this. Because when we put a gas bubble in your eye, it is, can be affected by elevation. A good example to kind of understand this is if you had a bag of potato chips and you took it up to the top of a mountain. When you go up in elevation, that bag will slowly expand with the decrease in the air pressure. And the same thing happens to the gas bubble within your eye. That gas bubble can get a slightly larger if you go up in elevation, and that can cause the eye pressure to go up and can sometimes cause severe pain. So it's really important that you don't go too high in elevation. And by too high in elevation, we usually mean going above 2,000 feet in elevation. So while that gas bubble is in your eye, and like we said before, which can be about two weeks or about two months, depending on the bubble that we use, it's really important that you kind of stay at the same level of elevation you were at at the time of your surgery. All right, well, that's all we have for our questions for today. Thank you very much for joining us on our segment, Eye on Vision, and we look forward to speaking with you later.